Long Box Review, Episode 15. Hi, this is Eric from Longbox Review at longboxreview.wordpress.com. Hi there, I'm back to talk about uh, the November previews, so let's get right to it. I want to start today uh, with Marvel, just to shake things up. Um, open up to page one, and uh, here's this black background with a red star in the middle, and the caption is, What if there wasn't only one? Coming in February. And that's all you know. I assume this has something to do with Captain America. I haven't looked online uh, for more information about this, but you know, with the Red Star, I assume it has something to do with it, or maybe it has something to do with Bucky and the whole Winter Soldier thing. I'm just guessing. I have no idea. Uh, the question is, are we interested? After the Fear Itself uh, event that just ended, I'm not so sure. Uh, usually I, I try to... I try to um, read the, the uh, events from the major companies just because I find them somewhat interesting just to see where the companies are going, at least for a little while. Um, however, that Fear Itself uh, event was just kind of bland, I have to say. There's some good moments in it. I have some more thoughts about uh, how Fear Itself ended on the blog. You can go, re go there and uh, read those if you'd like. Uh, but I'm not so sure I'm interested in this. Uh, obviously, I'm curious what this question means and what all this stuff uh, will mean in terms of where Marvel is headed for the next year. I guess we'll find out. Oh, you know what else is good on, in Marvel? Just uh, just in terms of the art, the, the cover images for the Ultimate Comics line, you've got uh, covers by Carrie Andrews. that are just fantastic. I think I talked about this last time, but just looking at it again, uh, specifically Ultimate Comics Spider-Man, uh, Ultimate Comics X-Men, and Ultimate Comics The Ultimates, which uh, takes the prize for um, repetitive name of a comic book. Uh, then we have Scarlet Spider number 1, coming from Christopher Yost and Ryan Stegman. Uh, it's a spinning out of Spider Island. I'm reading the, the copy here. The secrets of the brand new Scarlet Spider stand revealed in 40 pages. Uh, who is this new webbed wonder, and why has he come to face corruption in Houston, Texas? Which, Houston, Texas, that's, that's an odd place for a Marvel comic to be set in, but, eh, you know, who, who knows? Uh, let's see, 40 pages for $3.99. I can get behind three, a $3.99 Marvel price tag for 40 pages. Um, not for half that, but... I don't know, I, I was never a fan of the original Scarlet Spider thing back in the 90s. I know a lot of people are. The whole Ben Riley thing, I never got into that. So, But there you go, if you want to know who the new Scarlet Spider is and what's going on with that, uh, you can read that. Speaking of Spider-Man, we have a crossover with Daredevil coming up. This will be, in, part one will be in Amazing Spider-Man number 677 and then continues in Daredevil number 8. Um, I don't read any Spider-Man comics. Uh, the closest thing that I have come to was reading um, the Spider-Girl and Spider-Woman specials uh, tying into Spider-Island. Uh, but I will be getting this since it crosses over Daredevil, which I do read, uh, just to see what's going on with Spider-Man. Let's see here. Um, this involves Black Cat, and of course, so she's arrested, and of course Matt Murdock is um, uh, going to represent her. Uh, it says here, uh, Matt Murdock is the only lawyer who will touch her, and then in parentheses, her case, we mean. Ha, <laughs> good one. That's, that's, that's good humor there, Marvel. Uh, anyway, uh, the next bullet point on this is uh, the next great love triangle of the Marvel Universe begins. So, you know, I say, I guess, Daredevil and Black Cat and Sp I don't know, what what is Spider-Man, uh, what's going on in his love life and his titles? Uh, I know what they've had, he and Black Cat have had this on-again, off-again relationship over the years, but I don't know, I just, I, it just rubs me the wrong way when you, when you see uh, solicitation texts like this, the next great love triangle. I don't know about that. It seems really forced. 
Uh, this is just, I have no interest in this comic or this character, the title character anyway, but man, any cover that features uh, the jack-o'-lantern, I just think is cool. Any guy who has a pumpkin for a head, that it's a flaming pumpkin for a head, I just think that's pretty, just a, a cool visual. But that's in uh, Venom number 12 if you're interested in reading it, which I will not. Uh, Alpha Flight number 8, the final issue of the limited series turned ongoing series turned limited series ending with issue number 8. I um, have to say I'm not sorry to see this go. I was looking forward to the potential of the ongoing, uh, but having read the last few issues, uh, it's become clear, I think, why this comic was um, canceled from being an ongoing. It just, it, it's okay. There's nothing really bad with it. It's just not that interesting. Oh, and the, the covers to uh, FF number 14 and Fantastic Four number 602 just look pretty cool. And, of course, feature Galactus. I don't know, I think Galactus has become somewhat overused. Maybe that's just because I there was that whole Galactus uh, storyline in The Mighty Thor. So I'm thinking, eh, do we really need to have yet another Galactus story so soon? And going back to great cover images, I talked about this last time, but it just it bears repeating. Um, the cover to Thunderbolts number 169... Uh, by John Tyler Christopher, and I talked about how much I love his his cover work, and this cover just looks pretty cool too. Although it does say not final cover, so but either way, the image in in uh, the, this previews is pretty cool. And for the I guess anniversary issue readers out there, Wolverine number three hundred is out, uh, will be coming out. Uh, is this one of those Marvel renumbering things? I, I didn't think that Wolverine was up to 300 issues, but that could be. I, like I said, I don't I don't pay attention a lot to what a lot of what Marvel is putting out. But this is why I put Marvel first. It's just kind of uh, balance that out a little bit, shall I say? Oh my gosh, Scarlet number seven it has been solicited. Um, boy, you know I can barely remember what's going on in that title. Started out really strong that first issue. Second issue got uh, I thought pushed it forward a little bit more and made it interesting. But um, the infrequent publication schedule of this book just really ruins it for me a little bit. I'll, I'll get it, uh, uh, but just to see where we're going if I want to continue with it. But man, I if it continues to be like the, the publication continues to be like this, I, I don't know how much longer I'll stick with it. Although it is 40 pages for 3.95, so that's not bad. Nope. Speaking um, of Spider-Man and Daredevil, the Spider-Man Spider Island hardcover has been solicited. Uh, it, it's kind of neat on, on the cover of this solicitation. Uh, all these people in vari variations of Spider-Man's costume or some sort of spider-themed costume. Uh, Captain America's looks particularly interesting. And then the uh, Daredevil Volume 1 by Mark Wade. Um, I know some people started with this comic and ha have been, I think, uh, a bit disillusioned with it. I'm looking at you, Mr. Oddfellow. But I have just been enjoying the hell out of this comic. I knew going in with Mark Wade that, that I would probably enjoy it, and he has certainly proven that assumption correct. And with the end of uh, the Alpha Flight limited series, we have the premiere hardcover, Volume 1, where you get Alpha Flight 0 0.1 and one th issues 1 through 4. I would hope that, that Marvel would eventually um, collect all eight issues, or nine issues if you want to include the point one, which I don't really think you need that, but uh, I hope they would do that. Ooh, this is interesting. Marvel First, the 1970s, Volume 1 trade paperback. Um, you get a lot of number one and other comics. Um, Amazing Adventures, Savage Tales, Marvel Spotlight, Marvel Feature, Tomb of Dracula, Hero for Hire, She-Devil, Monster of Frankenstein. Uh, what interested, interested me, though, was uh, Adam Warlock on the cover. Uh, I won't be getting that, but I just I like that. I, I started collecting comics in the late 70s, very late 70s, so anything having to do with 
that time period of comics into the early 80s, I, I just, I love and have a, a fondness for. And let's see here, uh, Mystic, the Tenth Apprentice trade paperback. This collects uh, the formerly cross-gen series Mystic, numbers one through four. You get that for 15 bucks. Um, the art on that uh, by David Lopez was really good. I really enjoyed the art. Uh, the story was okay. Um, but it didn't really seem to really, I don't know, go anywhere to, to, to kind of get you excited about this world and what's going on with it. But it was, you know, it had some interesting ideas. But uh, like, like all of the cross-gen titles that Marvel has been putting out, these limited series, I have not been impressed with the, the offerings thus far. Given that the new uh, Matt Fraction Defenders comic is coming out soon, uh, they're soliciting the new Defenders Volume 1 trade. Uh, this collects Defenders 122 to 124, and new Defenders 125 to 131. And you get that for 30 bucks, 256 pages. And here's a, uh, another trade where I would hope that they would collect the entire series eventually, but this is the 12 volume one trade. Uh, I know a lot of people really like the, uh, the, the issues that have come out of this series. I was actually interested in getting it in trade, but it's taken so long and I know it's not done and I, and I, I know it, more issues are coming. It's just a matter of when, um, but maybe I'll pick this up. This is 17 bucks for 144 pages. All right, let's start with uh, the main previews book. We'll go to Dark Horse. Um, if for those people who like uh, the Whedonverse comics from Dark Horse, um, here's, uh, as it says in the solicitation, a great jumping on point for Angel and Faith, but this is issue number six. And then also, uh, it doesn't say this about uh, this issue of Buffy the Vampire Slayer season nine. Issue number five, though, is a, a standalone story, so maybe if you're on the fence about that book and you want to start there, you can, I guess, start there. Um, I will mention this, uh, House of Night, uh, number three, uh, only because I've, I've been loving the covers on this comic uh, by Jenny Frizen. Uh, these, these, they just look lovely, lovely stuff. I'm not getting it, but lovely stuff. I'll probably get that in trade. I think I mentioned that last time, too. Uh, this, is, I, this is just, this is just silly. Uh, the Occultist, number three, Coming out, uh, the, the solicitation text says, Stranger Than Doctor Strange. I, I don't know about you, but I don't find Doctor Strange all that strange, so that kind of that's, that's kind of lost on me. Here's a Dragon Age 2 Flemeth Dragon statue uh, for 50 bucks, but man, I, I, I'm, I, I love dragons. I like, I like images of dragons. Um, movies that actually have dragons in them, I, I, just, I just eat it up. So this looks really cool, but yeah, I can't afford 50 bucks for a statue. All right, moving on to DC Comics. This is, uh, I'm at the point now with DC Comics where I really need to take a look at the issues that I've been getting and decide if I'm going to keep with them because I just can't afford to keep getting most of the, the DC 52. Um, uh, for instance, Justice League International is I'm kind of on the fence about right now. Um, of course, Justice League is uh, a no-brainer for me. Um, Aquaman, I'm still enjoying Wonder Woman. Although, do you hear the news that uh, Cliff Chang will be leaving the book? That is... or oh, Yeah, here it is. Solicited for Wonder Woman number 5. Art by Tony Akins. Um, that's too bad. Uh, well, it's guest art by Tony Akins, but I, but I think I read recently that, that Cliff Chang was leaving Wonder Woman, and that's really too bad. That, uh, he his artwork, his preview artwork uh, for before the New Fifty Two came out, is what um, uh, made me really interested in the book. Although I, I think I mentioned with uh, with Odd Fellow in one of the podcasts that I looked at that cover image and wasn't wasn't so sure about the art, but I have grown to really really enjoy Cliff Chang's art in that series. So um, 
Let's see what else. Oh yeah, here's another one that I'm that I'm really looking at hard to to decide if I want to keep with it is Fury of Firestorm. I heard that Gail Simone will no longer be writing the title at some point soon, and if that's the case, I'm definitely out. I'm even looking at uh, Superman as a, a title to cut because I had, just haven't been enjoying that as much as I thought I was going to. Action Comics is the the, co the Superman comic to get, much like Batman is the Batman comic to really get. Uh, Supergirl is another title that I'm really not so sure that I'll keep with. I know I'm already dropping Detective Comics. Batman and Robin, however, I am I am sticking with because I really enjoy that uh, that title as I just recently posted in my latest pull list review. Uh, Birds of Prey was also one of those issue or yeah one of those titles that I was considering dropping, uh, but I just read just a day or two ago that Batgirl. Uh, would be joining the team. I'd like to see that dynamic, uh, so I'll probably stick with that for a little while. Green Lantern New Guardians is one title I'm getting where I'm, uh, that's again, that's a title that I'm not so sure that I'll continue with, much like Red Lanterns. I expect a lot more out of that. I mean, I, I liked, uh, I like the, the Ed Bennis art, um, but the story just isn't there. Oh, here's a great, uh, the cover to Shade Number 4 is really good. Art by Darwin Cook and Jay Bone, uh, with cover by Tony Harris. Of course, it's a Tony Harris cover. It just looks awesome. So, looking forward to reading that. I just read number one. Um, haven't read any others yet. Um, let's see. Uh, here's another title that I'm on the fence about, Animal Man, which really, because uh, I love the character, um, I'm actually enjoying the story that I'm getting. I'm not, not enjoying the art so much, um, but man, that that cover image, if that's the, the cover that we're going to get, holy moly, that's just freaky. Freaky! Showing Buddy Baker's daughter in a zombie-like uh, mode and with <laughs> Buddy's face eaten off. It's just, that's just creepy. Creepy! Resume Resurrection Man, number five, out. Uh, this is another title where I'm not so sure that I'll keep with it. Although I will stick with, uh, so far at least, I Vampire and, of course, Demon Knights. Action Comics and Justice League are like number one and number two, respectively. Um, and then I think Demon Knights is probably my number three favorite comic out of, out of this New 52. Uh, but that could change month to month. Stormwatch, I, that started out strong for me, but I'm not so sure about that anymore. Um, we'll see. Uh, that goes for Suicide Squad and Voodoo as well. Looking at the cover to Teen Titans number five, um, wow! If that's the new Kid Flash costume, I don't, I don't like it. Um, I think there's already too much red in this comic. I, they need to get a few more or some different uh, colors going here. Uh, Blue Beetle is another comic that I'm probably not going to stick with unless things change dramatically. Although I, I like the concept, I like this character, but I don't know, just not feeling it. Another comic I shouldn't be getting, but I am because I love the characters Hawk and Dove. It's really not that good, but I, I, it's the character, that's, that's why I'm reading it. And I'm talking about Dove, not really Hawk. In case you missed it, uh, the Batman Gates of Gotham limited series that is being traded. You get 144 pages for $15. Um, it also includes both Batman and Detective Comics annuals. Um, I appreciate what Scott Snyder, Kyle Higgins, and David Hine, as well as the artist that were involved, uh, the, the setting up Gotham City's past uh, to tie into some current storylines, but um, overall, I, I was not impressed with that series. It was okay. This is interesting. Um, DC Comics presents the New 52. So you get those uh, those $8 100-page-ish um, 100 page -ish, 100 page -ish, uh, collections. And this includes um, Animal Man, Justice League Dark, I Vampire, and Swamp Thing. So in case you missed those number one issues, I uh, wanted to give them a try for $8. 
Uh, there you go. I I, I'm, I kind of like that idea. I, I'm inter in, I'll be interested to see what other collections of the new 52 in this format that DC puts out, because there were a few um, few of the new 52 that I just simply didn't read. Uh, but maybe I'd go back and buy this eight dollar collection just to just to read those and and have a sort of complete view of the the new 52. Uh, I mentioned Hawk and Dove earlier. Uh, this is going back to what I think was better Hawk and Dove. They're collecting the five-issue miniseries from 1988, which ironically features art by Rob Liefeld, whose art I cannot stand in the current title, but back then it was it was okay. It was not bad. It was Rob Liefeld art before I even knew who Rob Liefeld was. Um, but that's when they introduced the new Dove, and that's when I fell in love with the character. Ooh, here's a good one. Uh, I did finally get all of the um, the standalone issues, but the Superman, the Black Ring, Volume 1 trade, this is from the Action Comics uh, Lex Luthor story uh, from issues 890 to 895. Get this trade if you have not read those issues. This is a damn fine story by Paul Cornell. Uh, and the art by Pete Woods and Sean Channer is is really good too. But uh, just go buy it. Don't don't even don't even think about it. Just just put it on your list. Buy it. Oh, and here my heart breaks just a little tiny bit because we have the zombie trade. Uh, you get all six issues plus um, the issue of the Brave and the Bold number twenty six, uh, which features a featured a team up of Zombie Inspector. That's when I first actually found out about this character zombie and then I and I read the, the series of course. Um, this is good this is good stuff. This is a good story. This I'm was sad to see this title not continue uh, at the launch of the new fifty two. They should have just put this under the, the Vertigo imprint or or something. Or just we should have, it should have continued. That's all I have to say. Go buy this one too. Fifteen bucks for 160 pages. That's good stuff, man. Moving on to IDW um, I have no interest in this, but I know some people do. Uh, remember the infestation crossover uh, idea or event or whatever you want to call it that they did, that they did. Well, it's back. Infestation two. Uh, looks like that they are um, crossing over with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Transformers, GI Joe, Danger Girl, and it says others. Um, oh, Thirty Days of Night. Uh, some other things as well, but I don't know, apparently that was such a good seller for them, they decided to do it again. Speaking of Danger Girl, um, this is a title that I've heard, or a, uh, yeah, a title that I've heard about for many years. I've never read anything, um, but something about it, just the idea of it, appeals to me for some reason. Um, so uh, they have Danger Girl Revolver number one of four. It says Danger Girl is back. They also have a Danger Girl, what they call the Danger-Sized Treasury Edition, um, 64 pages for $10. Might have to get that one, just just to get a, a, an idea of what Danger Girl is all about. Uh, this is something I would really like to get, um, but it being $50, I, I just can't afford it. Uh, this is Womanthology Heroic. Uh, says here, uh, Womanthology is a large-scale anthology showcasing the works of women in comics. It is created entirely by over 140 women of all experience levels, from young, from young girls who love to create comics all the way up to top industry professionals. Uh, all of the short stories will center around our theme for this volume, which is heroic. Um, they just, uh, this is a great thing uh, to support. Uh, and I'm sure there's a lot of good stories in there to read, but I just for uh, it's a hardcover, it's fifty dollars. That's that's not a bad price. I just can't afford that with everything else that I already get. But if you can, I think you ought to ch uh, check it out. Oh, and here we get to uh, the Star Trek portion. Um, I, I tried out the the new ongoing Star Trek series, where they tell classic Star Trek stories featuring the new. Um, universe Star Trek that they set up in the last movie. Um, uh, wow. Uh, 
this is one of those I'm trying to decide if I want to continue with. I thought it would be cool to see, you know, the, the, the new Kirk and Spock and the rest of the crew and how they dealt with those old stories. Um, but it turns out I didn't, it's, it hasn't been that cool. Now, granted, I've only read the first two issues telling the uh, Where No Man Has Gone Before story with Gary Mitchell. Uh, there's just not much there to really interest me. Um, I mean, I, if, if, if I want to if I want to uh, experience those old stories again, I should I should just pop in my DVDs of the original Trek and just watch those. And then there's the Star Trek and Legion of Superheroes crossover, uh, number four, being solicited. Uh, I just think it's a hell of a. <laughs> it's just I love the concept. I read the first issue. Uh, the second one I'll be reading soon. Um, it was nice to see these familiar characters on both sides uh, in, in a comic. Um, I, I'm really interested to see how they interact with each other, and, I, and we're going to get that in issue number two, I would assume. Up next is Image Comics, and the first thing they have here is the new Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips series, Fatal. This is that appears to be uh, number one of 12, I believe, and is... Uh, Looks like it's like a, a, a noir story, crime noir. Well, it just look, kind of looks like Cthulhu type stuff. It's got it's, it's got this tentacled headed monster uh, in it. Uh, there's a, there's a, a couple pages of uh, like three pages of the pre, uh, preview pages uh, in this. Uh, I'm gonna get this. It's it's Brew Baker and Sean Phillips doing more noir stuff. Um, what's interesting about this is that it's coming out from Image as opposed to Marvel, which generally pu publishes uh, their stuff. So I'm not sh quite sure why that is, but, you know, whatever, I'm going to get it. Interesting only in this one image, the preview image I see, this is for Profit, number 21, but there's a panel here showing this monster attacking uh, what I assume is the main character. Um, and it's interesting in that it reminds me a lot of the monster, speaking of Star Trek just a few moments ago, but the monster in Star Trek that was chasing Kirk on that, that frozen planet, which apparently was also, uh, either it was exactly the monster or something very similar. This is this is what I heard because I never saw it, but the, the, um, the monster in the movie Cloverfield. So I don't know what's up with that, or maybe, you know, maybe it's just a coincidence that it looks like that monster... Uh, that I saw in Star Trek, but there you go. Oh, here we go. Uh, finally, we get another Invincible trade. I get all the Invincible trades. Um, so we get Volume 15, Get Smart, which collects Invincible 85 to 90, 17 bucks for 144 pages. I've just enjoyed that comic from, from Trade 1. Moving on to the smaller presses, um, let's see here, uh, what is this? This is Honey Badger number one, um, this is from Antarctic Press. Uh, I only mentioned it because this, uh, the, 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 uh, the cover shows, or the cover is an homage to Action Comics, where, you know, the, the iconic image where Superman is holding a car above him, kind of smashing into the ground and people are running away all frightened. That is an image uh, that I, I see, you see all the time. Um, I just think it's funny when you, when you, when you see that with other companies, other characters and this, you know, it's, it's, it's a badger. It's a, it's a badger uh, that's doing, that's holding the car up and a raccoon and a bunny and looks like a squirrel or something is running away. You know, so it's a funny, uh, not funny animal, it's an animal comic, but I don't know anything about it, just I, that, that image caught my eye. And oh my god, are there a lot of Archie comics, or are there not? There, there's like pages and pages of Archie comics. <laughs> this is funny. Uh, Hermes Press is coming out with The Phantom, The Complete Sundays, Volume 1. And then there's a, uh, a new reprint edition of The Phantom, The Complete Newspaper Dailies, Volume 1. I, I just, that's just funny because I just recently watched the, the, the movie, The Phantom, and I enjoyed that pretty well. 
And from Boom Studios, there's this um, comic by Grant Morrison and Ian Gibson, Steed and Mrs. Peel, based on, of course, on the, the, the TV show The Avengers. I, I had heard somebody talking about this, and it left me with the impression that this is this is reprinted material, but I, I don't know. Um, either way, uh, Grant Morrison writing uh, characters from the Avengers, that might actually be interesting. And the, the preview art, uh, the one-page preview art we get, uh, Ian Gibson does a pretty good job here. I mentioned earlier the Spider-Man Daredevil crossover. Well, uh, from Boom we get the irredeemable and um, in, in, incorruptible crossover with issues. I think this is the this is parts three and four of that of that that crossover that started last time last month. Uh, I'll be getting those, of course. And from Kaboom, the imprint from Boom Studios uh, comes Peanuts number one. Uh, I got the Peanuts number zero issue, and I enjoy that well enough. It's not something I'll continue with, but I wanted just to see. Um, a Peanuts comic as opposed to a Peanuts strip. And uh, this is, oh, I get, I'm sorry, it looks like it's it's uh, it's not an ongoing, it's a, um, a limited series, one of four. Uh, for three ninety nine. I really question the the decision to publish kids comics, what, what I essentially think of as kids comics, at that price point. It just seems very counterintuitive. All right, moving from comics to collectibles, um, well, sort of, uh, we have here the DC Comics Superhero Collection magazine uh, featuring this month from DC uh, Ravager, mon and Static Shock. I'm really tempted to get that mon one. Uh, I just got my very first collection um, magazine with the figurine of Dove. Uh, I have to say it is not what I was expecting. Um, it's okay. It's a nice little lead figurine. Uh, you know, it comes with a warning about if you touch it, uh, do not, you know, put your fingers near your mouth or in your mouth or, you know, all the the, the scary stuff they, they say about lead. Um, but I bought it because it was Dove, right? So, uh, and then I saw, I was at the, my comic shop in, in uh, Spokane, Washington, and uh, they have a bunch of these up on a top shelf and I happen to see a Nightwing one, so now I have to go buy that one. Uh, definitely have to get that. Uh, so, and Monel has always been one of my favorite characters from the Legion of Superheroes, and uh, it's, it's a nice-looking little lead statue. Uh, for Marvel, they have a similar thing. Uh, they have looks like it's a um, it's a special thing because you get two figurines, and it is North Star and Aurora in their classic costumes. Um, if you like those, those, what I do like those two characters, but you know, it's nothing that I would want to get. Uh, but you get the two of those for and and the collector, uh, collective magazine for twenty eight bucks, which I guess is not a bad price considering that the ones from DC are fourteen for one. And so that Dove figurine appears to have opened up a door for me because now I'm looking at all these statues and and other figures, or figurines. Um, so I'm thinking, well, maybe I would get these. Uh, but here's here's one that's caught my eye. I won't I won't buy it. Um, but because it is a Donna Troy doll, and no, it's not a blow up doll. Um, it is a a toner DC Stars doll. Uh, it looks pretty good. I don't think the face looks quite like Donna, uh, but it's in her her classic red Teen Titans uh, jumpsuit. I just thought it was interesting that that they had. Donna Troy in that old costume. Uh, again, another Tonner doll. This this time, Jean Grey is is Phoenix, and this is in the the green and yellow costume. Uh, and then you also have an Emma Frost doll from Tonner, uh, and those look pretty good, I have to say. Oh, and here's something. I mention this only because my wife would love it, and I think I might get it for her for Christmas. Or wait, this is. This stuff comes after Christmas, so maybe uh, uh, a Valentine's Day gift, perhaps. Uh, anyway, here's here's the Rocky series, seven-inch action figures featuring. Um, well, they got the two pictures here: one of Rocky, 
all uh, bloodied and bruised from from his fight with Apollo Creed, I, I assume, because he have a Apollo Creed. Yes, it is. Uh, series one includes Rocky Balboa and Apollo Creed from their historic first fight. Two seven-inch action figures for eighteen bucks. I might l get that for her. She loves Rocky, and I don't know why. This is nice looking. Here's a, a a model kit from Mobius, the Colonial Viper MK2, from the sci-fi series Battlestar Galactica. Man, that looks nice. I used to I actually had, um, back in the, I think it was the late 70s, maybe early 80s, they came out with Viper and, and Cylon Raider toys, and and uh, I think I still have at least the, the Viper somewhere, stored somewhere. But the, yeah, the Vipers, I used to draw those a lot uh, in art class. I would draw the, 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 the side view of a Viper all the time, and just because I, I love the, the design of that ship. And if I had more room to store th things, I would probably end up doing some of those um, those models. Oh, and there's some cool looking, if you like steampunk stuff, there's a couple pages of steampunk accessories. you got goggles, shirts, belts. Uh, ooh, this this airship pirate latex cutlass looks pretty badass. Oh my god. Uh, here we have Star Trek cufflinks. I, I have no need of cufflinks, but that, that those look pretty cool. You have uh, the Enterprise symbol, and then you have the uh, Starfleet Academy symbol, and then you have a, a, you have the Enterprise. Um, 65 bucks? Wow. No thank you, but I just, I just think it's cool that they have that. Uh, I should mention this before, uh, but here it was at the end of the book instead of the beginning. Dark Horse Deluxe is putting out 8-inch Snoopy vinyl figures. They're $30.00. And you can get them in various colors, which is, I, th I think that's interesting. I don't know why they would do that, but um, you get it in white, blue, brown, green, pink, orange, violet, and yellow. And what's what's interesting is they're coming in uh, editions of 500 to 750, with the exception of the brown one, which is only an edition of 300. So apparently brown is not a popular color. But 30 bucks, I don't know, that seems kind of expensive for that. And what is this? Justice League Special Edition Lollipops and Pixels Candy. And it comes with stickers. <laughs> oh, oh, and uh, Pez, Justice League Pez and some Marvel um, Pez dispensers. That's kind of cool. And for those of you that are comic book collectors and rock and rollers, you can get some electric guitars. Captain America, Thor, oh those are juniors, um, but oh X-Men, Spider-Man, electric guitars, yeah that, that's, oh and then you get the guitar straps as well. That's right, get your geek on while you're rocking out. Alright, that is it for previews for stuff um, shipping in January and beyond. Uh, I hope my voice uh, wasn't doesn't sound too bad. I'm I'm still I've been sick for the last two weeks. I'm st I'm still trying to get over this. Uh, but anyway, uh, there you go. That's previews for November. Remember to leave some feedback uh, on iTunes for the podcast. Uh, you can always visit the blog at longboxreview.wordpress.com. I have a Facebook page, and I'm on Twitter as well. Uh, please follow and, uh, you know, get a hold of me. Give me some feedback. Tell me what you think. Tell me how wrong I am. Either way, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening.